Well, more proof that Russia's wartime reach extends well beyond the front lines in eastern Ukraine. For the first time ever, Denmark plans to draft both men and women into military service. It's only the third European country to do so, following Norway and Sweden. Beginning in 2026, the government wants to call up 5,000 co-ed conscripts a year. And the government says the decision is in reaction to the war in Ukraine and the Russian threat in Western Europe's backyard. Here's the Danish Prime Minister, Meta Frederiksen, speaking earlier today. Protecting your country is one of the most honorable things you can do. That's why the government is proposing that we expand conscription, making the responsibility greater and the tasks more numerous. And we're proposing full gender equality. We have no doubt that increased gender equality will create a more modern and diverse defense that reflects the times we live in. Well, I'm joined now by Anna-Sophie Alarm. She's a Danish lawyer, author, and journalist, and she joins us tonight from the capital of Denmark, Copenhagen. It's good to have you with us. It, maybe if you could put us in the mind, in the mind of, of the Danes. Explain to us why um, making the, the military service more co-ed, why is that so important right now? Well, uh, we are in, uh, in the middle of an effort to really uh, reinvigorate or even maybe reinvent the Danish uh, defense forces. Uh, there's been cutbacks for years. Um, it, there's been a lot of different scandals and trouble within the Danish uh, defense forces. And they also have the problem that it's very difficult to keep their personnel. Uh, we have a lot of people leaving uh, again. So this is, in fact, uh, you have to see this as the government's uh, effort to really try and create something entirely new. So it's not not just also the female conscription, but it's a, a much longer conscription mm -hmm. than before. Before it was four months, now it's going to be 11 months. Um, and also uh, quite a, a big boost of money also going into the Defence Forces, uh, about 6 billion euros over the next five years. And I, I'm wondering why Denmark has had a problem with retention. I mean, why have people been leaving the military? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's many different things. Some some are organizational. Some uh, has to do with salary um, opportunities, uh, leadership. Um, but it's quite significant uh, out of a body of maybe uh, five to seven, seven to nine thousand uh, staff, uh, not con conscripts but staff. Uh, Two thousand in 2022 left. Uh, so it's it's quite a uh, return uh, of of people that you have to get in and retrain, uh, mm -hmm. etc. Um, and of course, new conscripts does not fix uh, that uh, problem, uh, but it's a new start. You know, we we said earlier in the program that th this decision is is in reaction to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Russian threat to Western Europe. But your foreign minister has said that, and I'm quoting here, Russia does not pose a threat to Denmark. Is he right? <laughs> Uh, well, um, I think that is also political. We want to say that we don't think that Russia at this point poses a territorial threat uh, to Denmark, but we perceive Russia to be a threat on Europe uh, in general. Um, and we also do have, uh, along with Sweden and Finland, um, a neighborhood uh, within the Baltic uh, Sea. And, uh, and, and that means that we are neighbors with, uh, with Russia. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we feel, particularly after uh, the invasion of Ukraine, uh, that threat to be quite uh, present uh, and potent. In, in this attempt to, to bulk up the military, to make the military more attractive to civilians, how much of that is in reaction to the pressure that we saw under former U.S. President Donald Trump for all of NATO members to pay that 2% of GDP to NATO? Um, how much of it is a reaction to that? And how much of it is maybe a preparation for a possible second Donald Trump presidency? 
I think a lot of factors play together right now. We have the the war in Ukraine. Also, we see, and and the Danes are very strong allies uh, to Ukraine, big donors also of uh, of, uh, uh, aircraft. Um, And uh, so so that's one thing. We see the war uh, not going that well from a Ukrainian perspective. Um, We also see that, uh, that, we maybe not be we maybe not in a position where we can bet on uh, American uh, support for the long run um, in Europe, and so we need to create a much stronger, not only better funded to better staff, but a stronger European defence, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and that is what we are trying to contribute to here. We also for the next few years going to to exceed the 2% uh, um, target uh, of GDP. And Anna Sophie, I've got about 15 seconds. Just I want to ask you, what's been the public um, reaction to, to news of, you know, including women in this conscription? Is there broad support for it? Well, uh, it's divided. There's divided support. And I also want to say that uh, there is a, a series of parties. We have a lot of parties in the Danish parliament, but some there's parties behind the general framework within the defence uh, regulation. Two of them uh, do not agree with this. So it's not set in stone that it's, in, in fact, going to be uh, law uh, that, uh, that the women will also be conscribed. And uh, Sophie, I love joining us tonight from Copenhagen. Anna, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Okay.